Hi everyone, I'm back. This is the part where I usually say I am the headless YouTuber doing headless planty things, but obviously I am showing my face again. But I just want to talk about that a little bit before we get into this video. Yes, I have been showing my face a lot more. It's, I started really doing it in the week of plant to-dos. I kind of felt like filming with my face in, embedded in like a two and a half hour video was a little bit less frightening to me than just doing a dedicated video showing my face. Um, but really, like a lot of people, if you've been here a long time, you'll know that I don't show my face, not because I'm trying to be mysterious or it's Trying, I'm trying to like find a niche or something like I completely understand that people that show their face will have probably the most success on YouTube um, just depending I you know what kind of content you're making but typically for a channel like this it is a little strange to not show your face but I've kind of made it work and I've managed to attract people that understand me understand why I don't show my face and have been just so <sighs> understanding and um, welcoming and accepting and I've really really appreciated that uh, but in case you don't know why I don't show my face it really is because I get super anxious in front of a camera I don't like showing my face right now I have the viewfinder um, sort of tilted at an angle so I can't completely see my face I could just make sure that I'm in the frame I just get very distracted I have ADHD uh, if I focus too much on looking at myself I start to like hyper analyze everything on my face and I just lose track of my thoughts I I just yeah I did it again and now I don't know what I'm saying I've been working on it and another part of it is it's anxiety it's I you know YouTube is kind of a scary place and people will find any reason to pick you apart find things that are wrong with you and I'm like the last thing that I need are people telling me that I have like a face that they want to punch or that I'm like ugly or like annoying looking um I kind of talk weird I don't know if that makes sense but like I've always been very aware of this but like my mouth in general when I say certain things it just looks weird and it, it kind of seems like I'm like forcing it but that's just how I talk and that's how like my face <laughs> works and so I'm like that seems annoying and let's just do it headless let's like let's go into YouTube let's do it headless let's like like let's see if people are receptive of it and I was pretty lucky that they were but you know sometimes I have weeks where I am feeling good mentally my anxiety is really low um, I've managed to take a shower and like kind of make myself feel more presentable and alive and uh yeah i've just had like a pretty good few weeks of course mental health stuff is always up and down but i have been more on a high lately and i think it's because uh just a lot of things are changing in my life and i'm just like over the moon about my new niece or nephew that is going to be coming earth side in a very uh short few months from now and if you guys have been here a while you know how much my niece means to me she is like my whole entire world i love her so much she's like the joy and highlight of my life and she's getting older she knows how to work an ipad and so she just calls me randomly through the day and we can actually have like sort of conversations now and i just feel like that has really helped my mental health a lot is just having her more present in my life even from far away um, I've just been so grateful to have amazing friends and just be surrounded by good people I just saw some of my best friends this last weekend from back home they're like my non-blood sisters we've been friends since um, our teenage years and seeing them sort of just made my soul feel alive again so I have been feeling good but not to say I'm, you know, I'm always gonna have sort of the, it just goes back down and I don't know, it's kind of this roller coaster all the time. So please don't get used to me showing my face. I will have times where I just do not want to see my own face. I don't feel like getting ready. I just want to turn on a camera, film my plants and um, get on with my life. So with that said though, I just am yeah, very grateful that you guys have let me come this far on YouTube uh, filming the way that I have been and I really didn't think that 
it would turn into anything but yeah I am here a year later and I've been doing taxes and my new tax guy has been helping me with this new YouTube career thing and just to kind of see like the numbers over the last year um, in terms of you know just views or subscribers revenue like it's just kind of crazy because I just didn't think that it would turn into anything uh, so I do feel really lucky and I'm super grateful that you guys watch my channel on a weekly basis I am trying to get to a point where I can put out more videos um, every month that is my goal but for now we're gonna stick to the two week thing and uh, yeah hopefully that's all right with you guys but I just wanted to preface that with the whole showing my face thing because I just don't want it to be like, oh, she's showing her face now and, and then you're disappointed when you see the next video go up where I'm headless again. And uh, there were a few people that commented after I posted my Hoya tour video saying that it was kind of strange watching another video of mine where I'm headless after watching the Hoya cabinet tour where I show my face the whole time and guys trust me I know how strange that might be because it's hard to make a connection with a chest but I do have a face um, I just really tried to keep this channel geared toward the plants I don't really want it to be about me or my face and I just feel more comfortable when I can't see what's going on up here above the neck so anywho i'm going to stop talking about that and we are going to get straight into this video which i'm very excited about um sorry i had to grab my notes because i just wanted to make sure i didn't miss anything so as the title says obviously today i am finally going to be showing you my new plant shelf in my plant room and i can't tell you how happy this plant shelf has made me honestly i I don't know. I always kind of felt like my plant room wasn't right. Um, I've gone through so many different setups, different greenhouse situations, different orientations of where things are. And I kind of feel like I've found the one that makes me the happiest um, in terms of walking in there and seeing everything, um, also being functional. And truth be told, a lot of my plants were outgrowing the greenhouse space and I was getting very frustrated because I'm like I can't grow everything out here because I do understand that there are plants that just refuse to grow in room conditions um, and that's just been my experience and also honestly I didn't want to have all my plants out here like my bigger ones I did want to be able to enjoy a lot of my imported plants in my plant room still so this was the kind of basis of where I started, which is why I decided to add this plant shelf in there. But I was mostly inspired by my friend Amanda. I've talked about her on my channel before. This is her Instagram over here. We met on Instagram. I don't even know how long we've been Instagram friends, but we just clicked instantly and um when she first started following me i was like okay she doesn't have that many pictures but her plants are amazing and then i started going through her highlights because she just seemed so mysterious and i was just mind blown that she was growing these massive beautiful imported plants in just her living conditions like i'm talking massive massive specimens you guys like ones that you would think were gr like grown in the jungle or something like they were big and i was like she i don't see a greenhouse anywhere i don't see a millsbo a rudsta i don't even i don't see like a, a tent um she does have tents and she i think she does have a millsbo but they're mostly for her seedlings but she's growing all her plants just out in her living room in her kitchen and it's <sighs> I was like, you know what, this is, that is way more me than what I've been trying to do, which is the EXO thing. Um, and I'm just not in a place where I can have a huge tent. That would be ideal. If I had the room, I would love to just have like a walk-in tent because things grow so well in there. But there are plants that I want to see. I, I don't necessarily want them to be in a tent, uh, which is why the EXO was the next best thing for me. But um, plants grow and I used to chop my plants back 
all the time so that they can fit in the EXO. But now, especially ever since the conception of the Lazy Pole, I've just been inspired to grow my plants as large as they can get and not chopping them has been part of that journey. So when you can't chop your plants, they just grow and grow and grow, which has been so fun to watch. But at the same time, I've been trying to roll with the punches and figure out where they will all belong, I guess, long term. So uh, yeah, Amanda inspired this whole thing. She let me pick her brain. She, we just messaged back and forth. Um, we had a lot of late nights and she sent me so many photos of her space, which obviously I would have been rolling this whole time. And yeah, I just felt like, you know what? If she could do it, I could do it. I don't know why Pudge is barking. Pudge. There goes my train of thought. I have no idea what I was just saying. Um, I'm gonna try and continue talking even though he's barking. Um, but yeah, so she inspired this whole thing and I actually think that my ambient humidity is even higher than hers and I would say probably even temperature too. So I just thought like, why not? So thank you Amanda for giving me the courage to do this. It was the best decision that I've made in the last few months and I have made not very good decisions. Pudge! So yeah, as you can tell, her plants are beautiful. Um, of course they don't come without a few scars and things when you are growing in lower humidity, lower temperatures, but we will get into that later in this video i'm gonna show you first kind of where we started and like how i got things set up and just keep in mind i filmed this maybe two months ago and i have been wanting to show this plant room so bad but i wanted to make sure i liked it first i wanted to give myself some time to make observations and be able to give you guys some actual insight in the same video of how I'm liking growing on this new plant shelf and then also maybe some tips if you guys are gonna maybe try it too, which I highly recommend. But yeah, so the first half of this video, I'm gonna take you back to, I think I filmed it in February when I got it set up and then we'll jump back into real time. I'll meet you in the plant room and finally show you what it looks like. You guys, I feel like this has been such a long time coming. It's actually been so hard to not film with this massive plant shelf in the room. Um, it's in the area where I usually sit and do all my repots or do show and tells because the light is the best there. But yeah, just I'm so happy that this video is finally coming out so that I can just like get back to things and finally post it on Instagram and show people. It's not been a thing where it's like this crazy grand reveal, but it's, you know, I, I did want YouTube to be the first place to show it for this video. So I hope you enjoy and I will roll the footage and then I'll meet you in the plant room.
Okay, so we are back in the plant room. <sighs> I don't know how I want to show you this. I feel like I'm not very good at doing like m like montage shots or like beauty shots or b-roll shots. Mostly because I don't have the right tripod for it, like the right extension. It's very like sticky if that makes any sense. I can't just get like a smooth glide if I want to like pan across the room. So I have to use my hands and these guys are not the steadiest guys in town. So um, yeah, I'm just going to kind of quickly show you what it looks like now. And then um, we will just start talking about the setup. I will show you some of my plants, showing you some that have done well and some that have struggled. And we're just gonna talk all about the new plant shelf as well as some of the other sort of things that I fixed up in the plant room. So yeah, here is the new plant shelf. So now that you guys have seen it, I can finally film in this little corner again and I just feel like it looks so much better than it used to. Um, before when I would get this angle, I would try and show as much of this as possible but then this like main area behind me was just my plant shelf and I don't know, something about it always bothered me. So this is just way better for me filming wise and also just as a plant room, it's so fun to come in here now and just like open the door and see all my plants. So this was a much better option for me than a larger grow tent. I decided against getting one that was a little bit taller. It wouldn't fit in the closet anymore and so now I have this shelf to accommodate some of the plants that don't fit a lot of the overflow. I am prepping for more plants to come in so all of these will probably be a lot fuller maybe the next time you see it. My mills though is the next project for me that I kind of want to get looking really nice. But um, yeah, the plant shelf has been a work in progress over the last two months. It has definitely transformed a lot in the last two months just based on needs and um, sort of observations in terms of humidity and light and things like that. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is just give you some up close shots of the shelf and just show you all of the elements that I used just so that you guys can have an idea of how I set it up and everything that I've used for it. And then I will start showing you some plants. 
This shelf I've actually had for a while. I used to have my largest EXO on it, this guy, and then I had plants down at the bottom and then I stopped using it altogether and I used it in my office. But I was shopping for shelves to put in here. I was actually thinking of putting like a really nice one, like the one I have in my living room, but this just was the most practical in terms of price and sort of how I needed it to be set up just because you can adjust the height with these um, style shelves. I might have to be playing with the height a little bit to make it a little bit higher or, um, you know, kind of maybe move the bottom one down a bit where I have my seedlings and my props. But the standard sort of size between every one of them is pretty perfect for now. Um, let me get a tape measure and just give you the exact width that I have these parts. I might be getting these dimensions wrong, but obviously I will insert them um, in this video. But I believe the height of this is 72 inches high and 36 or 38 inches wide. I might be totally off, I'm just guessing. I know I have a tape measure, but I don't feel like measuring it right now. And then the shelves I've placed about 20 inches apart. So you can see that it's fit a lot of my Ethereums that are a little bit taller. Um, I even have some on like risers and other things to elevate them a little bit so that the back is a little higher and then I can fit some in the front. But yeah, it's a great size. Uh, I will obviously include the price of this unit as well and keep in mind this is going to be in Canadian dollars. I think you might be able to even order it through like your local Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, there are tons of other brands that you can use that are probably even going to be cheaper. I find that everything tends to be really expensive on Amazon Canada, but I just, I love this shelf so much. I like that it's wire so that um, there's like airflow moving throughout the whole thing. I like the, that the light is able to penetrate all of the shelves opposed to like my shelf on the living room with the wooden shelves. You kind of have to put a light at every section um, and it doesn't sort of get diffused. This is just much brighter all of the light is able to move throughout the shelf and in general i just feel like this made the most sense um, in terms of the kind of shelf to use for something like this in this space and it does match pretty perfectly with my exos and my reds that's not a red set my mills bow um just i wanted something black obviously and something that looked a little bit more industrial and i don't think it gets more industrial than this so uh, that is the shelf I do have a matching shelf next to it, which is this guy that my EXO was sitting on. I think in another video, I'll do a full tour of my updated plant room, but for now, we're just going to focus on the shelf. But it does come in different sizes. I like that it matches. And again, I like that I can play with the height. So I think the next thing I want to talk about are the lights. So these are the Barina 10 Watt light panels and I cannot tell you how much I'm enjoying these lights. I think Alice talked about it in a recent video. We both recently switched out all of our Domia panels to these and the lighting has just been like night and day. These are beautiful, beautiful lights. They are like a warm, not a warm white. They're not like a cool, cool white where it's almost like fluorescent. It does have a very sort of warm feeling to it. It's not like that cold white light. It's a beautiful, beautiful white color. And I have two, four, five, I have six lights um, on this shelf. I've got two up at the very top, two here, and then one bar on each of the other shelves. So you can see that the lights are just being held up with these Velcro strips, but I've got two on each side. And these lights don't get super, super hot, so I'm not like really worried about the Velcro getting hot or anything. These glass shelves are actually the shelves from the Millsbo Tall Unit. Erin used to make custom shelves for people locally and she replaced them with like the wire shelving. So she had a bunch of these extra glass shelves and she gave them to me a while back. So I find that having the glass definitely helps a lot because if you have small plants like this, it gets a little bit difficult to like place it without it like, you know, falling through. So having glass really helps or you can even get like custom acrylic cut for it. 
um, or just anything you have at home that uh, you can create a flat surface. Obviously, I would recommend something that's clear so that the light can come through all of the shelves. And then I also have these two fans here and I actually want to get one more or like another set to go over here. It doesn't really kill the humidity. Right now it's sitting at about 55-60% which is what I want it at. And I like that these computer fans like don't move the air around too much but just enough to get some airflow going. You can kind of see these leaves are moving. The one in the back is moving. So there's air being pushed all the way here. I can actually feel the air all the way in the back here. But I like it more than a, like a traditional like USB fan because they're so quiet. And yeah, it just pushes around the air just enough to get some good airflow without killing the humidity. And I was very adamant about having fans um, in this setup because of how prone anthuriums are to fungal things. You can kind of see I've dealt with a few fungal things um, with some previous plants, some of them are not looking great and I will kind of talk about why some of them are struggling and things like that. But yeah, the fans have definitely helped a lot. It also helps with emergent leaves and things like that. I used to have this humidifier up here, but it was such a pain to have to refill it every day and like get the ladder out. So now I'm able to easily just add water in there since I can actually reach it. But yeah, it was nice when it was up here because all of that humidity was being dispersed among the shelf. And let me move my tripod. But this isn't so bad either. And now my plants that are in this EXO are also getting some humidity. And I know there are no doors. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but I am very anxious to kind of walk you guys through the new setup that I have for my other EXOs and my tent and stuff. What else? Oh, I have a Mars Hydro light up there and I just feel like it helps brighten the entire room and also gives some light to my big boys up there. I know that the lighting is so bad right now because it's getting backlit. I tried to do the best that I could hiding like wires and stuff from the light. So I've used a lot of these black Velcro ties to kind of tie it onto the pole to make it a little bit less sort of like flaily, if that makes sense, just kind of hanging everywhere. Like I've really tried to like snake them through the shelves as much as possible. You can kind of see the cluster back there. That is my main power source for pretty much this entire plant room. And it's all on a timer. All of these are connected to that, that electrical tower. But I feel like um, it's pretty much set now. There wasn't really anything else I wanted to do besides add maybe one more fan. I also tried to bring in some like elements of I guess like design in here too. I didn't want it to just be just like a place to put plants. Um, I wanted it to like look and feel very jungly in here which is also why I wanted to put one of those Florida um, greens in here. I did repot this one in a video and I've just felt like it's really made this space look a bit more wild, which is the look I was going for. Um, I might need to move it down soon because it is growing. That new leaf up there is brand new. I used to have my bigger Vitara folium here, but it got thrips and I didn't want to risk bringing thrips into this space. So I used to have like a long Vitara folium like cascading down, which was really nice. But you know, um, that guy is in isolation now. For the most part, I have anthuriums on this shelf because of the fact that I needed to get them out of a greenhouse, mostly for fungal and space reasons. But I have more philodendrons than I do in Ethereum. So this bottom shelf here is kind of dedicated to newer imports, some of the plants that didn't um, fit on my plant shelf outside, some propagations. That one is a newer Gloriosum that I picked up that has this sort of like weird fungally thing like I'm not sure what's going on with it, but it's my new project and I'm trying to figure it out. Um, if you watched my import video, you'll know that some of these Gloriosums are from my import and I know that I said I was going to leave it in the bin for a while, but they've been doing so well and <laughs> they're putting out new leaves so they've outgrown that little box. So some of them are out here now, like this Gloriosum is brand new. I do have my new Philodendron SP Columbia in there. 
And yeah, just kind of overflow philodendrons. I <laughs> did prop this one up with some string because the leaves were so droopy. And then down here are some of my overflow seedlings. Obviously, I need to fill the rest of that tray with my seedlings, but that is for another day. They're actually in here. But these are some overflow props, and then I've got the rest of my props in the place that I've always had it in. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the plant shelf. It's nothing too crazy. I feel like once you get the lighting situation set up, I think that was the most difficult part of this whole project was trying to figure out how to get everything lit, um, how to share cords, and it was kind of a nightmare, but I figured it out and I'm really happy with it. So um, I think now we are going to talk about sort of my experience with this new plant shelf, things that I've observed and experienced and blah, blah, blah. And then I'll show you some plants and kind of talk a little bit more about acclimatizing these guys ones out from a greenhouse. So I wanna first talk about the acclimatization process and sort of how that looked like for me in the first month. Uh, for the first like week or week and a half, it was like they didn't skip a beat. It's like they had not even known that they were outside of a greenhouse. But then I think once we hit week two, it was like a lot of them were very, very visual, showing me that they understand that they're outside of the greenhouse now. And uh, I had a lot of leaf crisping. I had a lot of leaves, particularly that would grow, like it would emerge out of the caterpillar and then it would just completely dry up. When I don't have this humidifier running, um, sometimes the hygrometer will read humidity at 20%, which I know sounds crazy, but I fully believe because if I don't have a thick layer of lotion on my body or on my face at all times, I dry out like, Spongebob in Sandy's dome, it's like I become a prune and um, yeah, it just gets really really dry in this apartment and so when I had times where I didn't refill my humidifier and I was being lazy, they were very aware of it. So I lost, I want to say about six emergent leaves on my anthuriums. Um, my philodendrons have not cared at all that it is on this shelf now and not living in a tent or in one of my exos but just keep in mind that my exos are anywhere from like 55 percent to like 85 i would say or maybe even higher um so it went from that to like 20 percent in just a short like week or two i have been trying to get better about refilling my humidifier but at the same time i kind of want to like I really want I really don't want to spoil them too much I do want them to learn how to live in low humidity especially um, since I will be going back to California a few times this year I think I think I'm gonna go back three more times by Christmas so obviously I'm not going to have anyone come here every day to refill the humidifier so I am really really hoping I can get them to just learn to live in 30% and below and when I do have the humidifier on it's just like an extra treat But not something that they like need to survive. So that's my goal right now. I feel like I'm getting closer It's been about two months. I have had some new leaves, which I will show you um, But I also will show you some of the not fails But some of the casualties that we had in trying to acclimatize out to the shelf. So yeah, there was a, um, a period of struggling a little bit but i think one thing that i really really love and adore about amanda is that she's so capable of growing these big beautiful aeroids inside of her apartment which seems so unnatural but um she doesn't glorify perfect leaves she is very aware that in the conditions she gives her plant she can't expect perfect pristine leaves all the time and that just kind of comes with it and so as I've moved some of these plants out to the shelf plants that I'm used to having like pristine leaves all the time because I gave them that perfect environment um, it's kind of like shifted my mindset where it's like I don't expect those pristine leaves anymore and I'm just appreciative when I have any kind of growth so that's been actually kind of nice is just being grateful for new leaves um, and not really 
being so, so nitpicky about like, oh, that thing, you know, it ripped when it was unfurling or this one has a little scar or whatever. Uh, yeah, it's just, it is what it is <laughs> in these conditions. So if you are thinking about acclimatizing out your plants from greenhouses, just keep in mind that there is a process, you know, and you are gonna have casualties. There is a period of growing pains where you have to be willing to sacrifice old leaves and sacrificed perfect green leaves. You probably would have seen from the little montage that I put in the first reveal that I do have a lot of yellowing leaves right now. I do have a lot of leaves that don't look great. And part of that is from this process of moving it out. Some were fungal um, from when I had it in a greenhouse and some are from pests. So that's also what I wanna talk about too um, are spider mites. I'm gonna first bring out my happy hybrid. Oh, it's wet. No, no. Ah, it's dripping. Okay. Don't mind the paper towel, but I feel like my happy hybrid is a really good plant to show as an example because I think that this thing has been through it all. So Back when I was in the tent, I started to get these little spots on it and I forgot which video I talked about fungal spots versus um, watering issues, which is also insight from Amanda. I started to get these little spots on this leaf and then also um, another leaf that has I've just cut off because it was so fungally, but it was like these little yellow spots that have a very bright halo around it that appear not only around the leaf margins but like in the center of the leaves they kind of cluster and just why wouldn't it focus um they sort of cluster and they just look very like sickly so one of the leaves was just like riddled with it so i cut it off i didn't want it to spread to other plants when i moved it out here but you can kind of still see some trace of like yucky fungal things. I don't really have an example of a leaf that has dried out um, because I, I am pretty good about watering this plant, but I definitely have some plants that I can show you. But I also have been dealing with spider mite. I've been dealing with spider mite everywhere in my entire house. A lot of my alocasias have spider mites right now. A lot of my anthuriums have spider mites right now. There's even spider mites in my tent. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. Um, it sucks because spider mites do not die from systemic crazy how we can kill a plant like thrips but not spider mites so i have been using a little bit stronger of a pesticide spray i i wanted to go like the net more natural way and i was like you know what f it i'm i'm over it this leaf i think got hit the worst um it kind of looked like it could be thrips but it wasn't thrips it was spider mites and the reason that um a lot of people confuse thrips damage and spider mite damage is because of this sort of like coppery color but I find that spider mites definitely leave more of a like a dusty look on it. Like it looks like there's like diatomaceous earth on it or something. So that was like my first sign that I knew that it was spider mites. And then also, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up. I have to get my face out of the viewfinder, but um, you might be able to see some of that webbing right in the sinus between the lobes. You know, just kind of been through it all, which is why it doesn't look the greatest. This one is the newest leaf on it, and it's not very big at all. It's actually quite small in comparison to some of the leaves that I had on it before, but it's just starting to adjust, and this was one of the plants that pushed out growth almost immediately after I put it on this shelf, but as soon as it emerged from the caterpillar, it just Died. It just completely turned black and it just crisped off, which is why you can see this petiole with no leaf. Oh my gosh, my face! I might have to go headless. Um, there used to be a there used to be a leaf here. Now there's not a leaf anymore. But after that casualty and a few others that kind of ex exhibited the same behavior um, in terms of new leaves just sort of crusting off, I started to spray them. This here is my Anthurium King of Spades. Yes, it looks very sad. This one also had spider mites pretty bad. And I also was very, very bad at watering this one and it just completely threw a fit. I can't tell if this lighting is better or worse, but um, this is the newest leaf to come out on it. This one unfurled on the shelf 
and all I did was make sure that while it was brand new, like while it while it was coming out of the catafil and when it first emerged, I just made sure to spray it like almost every single day. Make sure that a lot of that film that keeps these things furled up when it first comes out loosens up um, just to make sure that it had enough humidity around it. I made sure to dampen this moss like at least every other day and this one unfurled with no problem. Um, this one did have spider mites. It probably still does have spider mites and you can tell because this one is very, very spotty. Oh my gosh, hide your head. Very spotty, but still really healthy. Definitely a much smaller leaf than the one that came before it. But honestly, I'm just really glad to have a new leaf. And this one grew like right under this 10 watt light and look how dark it is. When these ones were emergent, when these ones were brand new, they were not nearly as dark as this. Like I'm actually really shocked at how dark this leaf turned out. Like. I, yeah, it's beautiful. It's probably one of my favorite leaves right now. And it is seemingly acclimatized to very, very low humidity. These ones won't look any better than it does now, but hopefully I can get some new growth on this one. But this is a leaf that definitely appreciated the extra humidity just through spraying um, when it first came out. Sorry, I have to change the angle again. I'm still trying to figure out the settings on the camera when I have so much light behind me, but I'm gonna try. And it doesn't help that this leaf is so dark. So this is my Anthurium Ace of Spades. That is from Amanda, actually. And both of these actually unfurled, I believe, in low humidity. She, When she saw that I had this in an exo, she was like, take it out of there now. And honestly, it, it's probably one of the easier anthuriums that I have. It's not very finicky at all. It didn't react badly to low humidity and I didn't need to spray this one at all when it was emerging. Um, this one just kind of knew what to do, didn't skip a beat. Um, I really think that the babying aspect, it just depends on the plant. You kind of have to really observe them and just make sure that they don't need assistance because some of them you really don't need to like be spraying all the time or whatever um, they're all going to be different so this one and also like my vitarfol my variegated vitarfolium that pushed out a new leaf on this shelf did not need spraying at all whereas um you know my pappy hybrid needed some help yeah there were a few other plants that tried to push out growth and then it just aborted so that wasn't something that I was really, really keeping an eye on as closely as I should have been. Um, but, you know, it's all part of the learning process. Now that I have my anthuriums out here, whenever I do see a new leaf, I just kind of make sure that like, okay, I don't, do I need to give you water? Um, are you thirsty? Like, what can I do to help? And yeah, they're usually pretty visual if they need some help. So if they don't look like they do and they're just kind of working itself out, I sort of just let it so that it can learn to do it again. It's like potty training, you know? Uh, that's kind of part of the acclimatization process. I want to show you my crystal black, but it's so big and it's all the way back there, but I do have a new leaf on it as well. And that one did not need any help at all. Um, like when it was coming out of the caterpillar, I didn't have to spray it at all and it was perfectly fine. This is my Anthurium Crystallinum. I don't think that this is an Anthurium Crystal Black, although I also wouldn't doubt if it was because it is very dark and the, the venation is very, very silvery and bright like my actual Crystal Black. They look almost identical, but I don't know. This could just be a regular crystal, but this is the one that has like 5 million growth points on it. Um, I cleaned this chunk and I was just expecting one point to wake up and then so many others woke up too. Although I don't know if they're actually going to fully wake up, like push out leaves, but this guy was the winner. He came out first and it's huge for being like just kind of a offshoot or, you know, a secondary growth point and not like the main growth point from this leaf. So, oh, this is heavy. Yeah, nice surprise with this one. This one did need a little bit more help. I noticed that when it first unfurled, it was like stuck in the catapult, you know, when like the petiole does that bendy thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, if I don't help this guy, it is, 
were done for. So I did have to do a lot of spraying. I used my earwax scraper to help it out of the sheath or out of the catafil. And as it was actively unfurling, I was just making sure to spray it every single day just to give it some extra humidity. And yeah, it unfurled just fine. Not many sort of damages from it. There's a few, like it got stuck and I had to help it. So obviously it kind of registered some of those movements as I was helping it. But yeah, otherwise it's a very healthy leaf. Um, it's very happy here. Did not throw a fit at all. Uh, this one is definitely on the way out, but man, I have had this leaf for ages, you guys. This leaf is over a year. I think I've had this leaf for like almost two years now and it's birthed all of these growth points. It's birthed this plant. So she definitely, she definitely did a good job. I know I talked about this in another video, but I'm sure a lot of people missed it. Um, I talked a bit about fungal things versus a watering issue. This is actually the plant that started the whole thing of me saying, F it, I'm moving all of my anthuriums outside of greenhouses because I'm so tired of fungal stuff. And I showed this to Amanda and she started asking questions about the watering, the substrate, the care, the conditions, and um, in the video that I sent her, you know, she noticed that the leaves were so floppy, it was so thirsty, and she was like, you just need to water it. That's not even a fungal thing, you just need to water it. So kind of the main observation with distinguishing between a fungal thing and a watering thing, she explained it in a way that this plant perfectly describes actually. So it was this leaf that set me off. It was like bright yellow down at the, the tip here and it had like a bright yellow halo and I immediately thought it was fungal just because when I see a yellow halo that's kind of where my brain goes to immediately but you can see this dark brown line that kind of separates this browning tip from the rest of the leaf and yes there is a yellow halo but it is completely like sealed off so when you see that like a crispy tip or crispy edges but it's like sealed off from like the rest of the plant to kind of bleed into it. Watering issue, usually. I've still mistreated this plant so much. It's very thirsty, it dries out so fast. Yeah, same with this. It's like crispy edge, but it's got this brown sort of line here that separates it and it's just sealed off so that it doesn't seep into the plant even more. Um, typically, if you see stuff like that happening, along the leaf margins or even sort of like in the center of it uh, it's usually an inconsistent watering thing where you let your anthuriums dry out go long periods without water they droop and then you just you infuse them with water again one thing that i've observed is anthuriums don't like to dry out they're tolerant of drying out but they will show you visibly that they did not appreciate it so don't automatically write things off as fungal when you see like a yellow spot or like yellow edges. Um, just kind of go back and think like, all right, so am I consistent at watering? How long did I go letting water just deplete from the vessel? Feel the leaves, are they soft? And you kind of have to do like a process of elimination um, before you're just gonna start treating with antifungal stuff or start isolating your plants or treating it like you've got some crazy fungal issue because I think with anthuriums, like it, it gets very blurry. Like a lot of the symptoms of fungal things or underwatering or overwatering, they all kind of overlap and they present very similar when really it could just be a tiny little thing that um, can show you what it actually is. My advice that has been relayed from Amanda, I'm not taking credit for this observation, this was completely something she taught me that actually holds true because a lot of the plants that I have this issue with are plants that I'm like, oh yeah, I always let that one dry out or I've needed to get that one into pond for a long time. Uh, like some of my anthuriums that I had purely in moss, oh my gosh, I would let it get bone dry. This one, this thing was in moss for a long time and even with pond, I just find that especially in 20% humidity with these grow lights blasting 12 hours a day, it's like, of course things are going to dry out. You know, it's photosynthesizing, it's using that water, but water is also being evaporated and it's just going away very quickly. I guess that will be 
One of the first things that I've learned in caring for these anthuriums specifically out on the shelf is to be regular with your watering. I've just been a little bit more aware of who's drying out. I've been more um, regular about checking vessels and making sure that nobody needs water. It definitely helps that I have things in no drainage pots so that I can just literally add water and not need to worry about drip trays or bringing them to sinks or anything. Um, so eventually I plan on moving all of my anthuriums to ponds specifically and into no drainage pots because I've just found that that combination has just worked wonders um, and a lot of my anthuriums have enjoyed it. So, uh, you know, we're kind of in a weird growing pain stage with a lot of my anthuriums but I'm hopeful that by like the end of summer a lot of them will stabilize and a lot of them will have given me new leaves that have grown in these conditions and fingers crossed you can see more green than yellow the next time I do like a full plant shelf tour but yeah I just wanted to quickly talk about fungal versus watering stuff the next one that I want to talk about is this vitarifolium uh, this one was the vitarifolium that I grew from a very small plant. Um, most of the leaves were this size, if not smaller. And uh, I grew it purely in an XO because I had been growing all of my vitarifoliums in room humidity conditions. And yeah, it's a lot more slow growing when you don't grow it in higher conditions. Um, the leaves don't look like long and beautiful like this but you know it can be done but I did enjoy just having one vitarifolium that was constantly putting out growth giving me these big long straps um, so I was worried about growing this one from those conditions into these conditions but honestly it has been such a champ like this one was actually grown half inside of an exo and then it completed its full hardening off on the shelf there is another new leaf coming right here and uh, so far so good the only leaves that have really yellowed are the two oldest ones so actually the three oldest ones but in terms of like the newer leaves everyone is still looking really good i mentioned in other videos that i am dealing with not only spider mites but thrips everywhere i wouldn't brand it as a full infestation but more plants have thrips than i would prefer i would prefer to never have thrips but that's not realistic for me i know that i will always have thrips at one point or another even with systemic they just i swear some of them i swear they don't care they just continue to live despite being sprayed down constantly with thrip spray and being doused with systemic but yeah this one had thrips and i think i found it early enough that i could treat it and i haven't seen another one on it since then but yeah that's i guess another thing to note is that when you do grow plants outside of a greenhouse they are more susceptible to getting pests I don't think that having greenhouses or tents are a sure way to avoid pests completely because I do have spider mites in my tent even though it's very very humid in there and spider mites tend to not do well in humid conditions but yeah just be aware that oh I see a spider web just be aware that when you move your plants out they are just more exposed to everything including pests that are just roaming around if you're using systemic make sure you're applying it the amount of times that it recommends which i think is like every three months make sure you are wiping down your plants regularly or at least checking them regularly ever since i moved this shelf out here i am more just kind of i am spending a lot more time literally sitting right here in this chair just kind of twiddling with everyone, making sure everyone's okay. I'm like there with my magnifying glass. So I know that probably half of these plants have spider mites. Am I super, super worried? No, they do leave damage, but they're not gonna kill my plant completely as long as I can keep treating it and containing the colonies of them. But yeah, just another thing to keep in mind, um, pest prevention is very important when you are growing plants um, out on a shelf. I feel like that was all that I wanted to show you. I really just wanted to finally show my shelf 
um, so that I can start filming in this little corner again. Um, I do plan on doing a plant room tour soon. I do plan on showing every single plant that I have growing in my plant room. That one might have to be a part one and two video again. Um, I am also going to be redoing the Mills bow, like I mentioned. Um, and I'm also going to be redoing this EXO here. But yeah, otherwise I think that's it. I've given you a rundown of how I've set everything up, the things that I'm using on the shelf, uh, some of the things that I've experienced in the first two months that I've had anthuriums growing out in very, very low humidity, things to do to prevent leaves from crisping up and dying before that they're before they're given a chance to live. Uh, I will try and link everything that I've used down in the description. If not, I will maybe try to link something similar. But yeah, I think that's it. So hopefully you guys enjoy this new plant room setup as much as I have been enjoying it. I feel like things are probably going to evolve in the next few months. I don't know how, but I, I really just want to cover up a lot of these wires. And I don't know if that means adding things like... Spanish moss or adding just live moss in places. I'm not sure yet. I just am bothered by the cords. I will say that. Despite all that, it's functional. It works well for the space. I love it. Um, my plant room has definitely transformed into a space that like I really, really, really love and I enjoy being in here and I could honestly just spend hours in here staring at them and doing nothing. But yeah. Thank goodness the secret is finally out so you will be seeing the shelf a lot more in my videos now and you can stop getting the very boring view of my door and my plant supply cabinet. Um, if you guys have any questions about this setup, if you have any questions about acclimatizing, I think that's another video that I might do as a segment of a week a week of plant to do's just because I don't think that there's enough to talk about with acclimatization for it to be its own video although I haven't done a shorty in a while the shorties are the 20 minute and under videos which I have now done one <laughs> because I'm just so bad at doing short videos but I'm gonna try so yeah please leave me any questions that you might have about anything I talked about in this video a lot of your comments help me figure out what is gonna be next in the schedule um, you guys really helped me think of video ideas that I never would have thought to do. So thank you very much. Thank you guys for watching another video. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you so, so much. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it helps pudgeonize visibility a lot on YouTube. And I guess I will just see you in the next one.